So what makes us more or less aggressive? Observational learning is one theory that's looked at this. This theory suggests that we learn to be aggressive. For example, we learn to be violent because we see violence around us, in our home, in our neighbourhood, or on TV. A national study from the US reported in 1999 that, on average, American children spend approximately 40 hours a week engaging in different forms of media. That's a full-time job. Children spend the majority of their time watching TVs, movies, or videos. If we looked at the behaviour of American children on a Saturday morning, at 10 a.m. say, more than 60% of all children are watching TV. After reaching their 12th birthday, American children in the 90s were recorded as having seen more than 8,000 murders and more than 100,000 incidents of other violence, such as rapes and assaults, on television. In addition to TV, there's also video games that children like to play. Prevenzo in 1991 found that around 85% of the most popular video games in America consisted of violence. And children especially like to play violent video games. Buckman and Funk in 1996 asked 10-year-old boys and girls about their favourite video games. They discovered that around 73% of boys and 59% of girls preferred to play video games that consisted of violence. In recent years, with the development of technology and the use of social media, we're constantly exposed to violence. And of course, it's natural to ask the question, is all this exposure to violence damaging us? More importantly, what is it doing to the young minds of children who are exposed to all this violence? People are often concerned with the amount of violence children see on TV and in video games they play. They often think that children's exposure to all this violence is making them unable to tell the difference between fantasy violence and real violence. Another concern is the possibility of desensitisation. As a result of children seeing all this violence on TV and in the different forms of media, it's possible they're becoming desensitised to aggression and violence in the real world. However, it's still unclear whether this is true. Just because children see violence on TV, doesn't mean they're going to be desensitised to actual violence. If a young person today witnessed somebody being stabbed to death in front of them, their experience would likely be just as horrible as it would be for a young person 50 years ago. However, that's not to say that the effects aren't there in subtle ways. Through observational learning, it's easy to think that the more violence children are exposed to, the more likely they will be to become aggressive themselves. In 1994, Paik and Comstock conducted a meta-analysis that looked at the relationship between exposure to media violence and aggression and reported an average correlation of 0.31. The size of the circle here shows how much variation in aggression is related to exposure to media violence. A few years later, in 1998, Hogben reported a correlation of only 0.11 between media violence and aggression. On the high end of this spectrum, a correlation of 0.31 is not a small correlation. The correlation between smoking and tobacco and lung cancer is actually around 0.4. A positive correlation of 0.31 suggests that the more violent media children are exposed to, the more aggressive they become. Does this mean that violent media is causing aggression? 